In this video, and as far as the linear control system course is concerned, we will introduce the commonly used definitions in the canonical feedback control systems. Before doing so, and as a building block of any dynamic system, we will first describe what a block or a subsystem is. Dynamic systems are represented mathematically by a set of simultaneous differential equations and are made of multiple subsystems. Each subsystem can be represented pictorially by a box as shown here, with the input-output relationship represented by a linear operation. The representation could be in the continuous or discrete time domain, and you would need a convolution operation in order to find the output response. On the other hand, the input-output relationship could be also expressed differently as a rational fraction in the Laplace or the Z domain. And in these latter cases, simple multiplication would replace the convolution. In addition to using blocks to represent subsystems, small circles are used to represent the operations of addition and subtraction. These are called summing points, with the appropriate plus or minus sign associated with the arrows entering the circle. The output is the algebraic sum of the inputs. Any number of inputs may enter a summing point. Some books, though, put a cross in the circle. and some other box use a summation symbol instead. So if you have a dynamic system that can be represented entirely by a block diagram, then the overall transfer function of the system can be determined. Or perhaps you can arrive at the following configuration. This resulting configuration will be discussed later using the block diagram reduction techniques. And this is called the canonical form of a feedback control system. Please note that the transfer functions, G and H, are not necessarily unique for a particular system. Let's consider the following canonical feedback control system. The open loop transfer function is defined as B over E. So the relation between B and E is simply that B is equal to H G times E. So B over E equals to G H. The second definition is the feedforward transfer function and it's defined as the output signal in relation to the error signal C over E. And in our case, the relation of C um, and E is governed by G. C equals to G E. The third definition is the closed loop transfer function, or what we call sometimes control ratio. It is equal to C over R, 
A is your reference or input signal. This relation is equal to G over 1 plus GH. The 1 plus, the plus sign in the denominator, is dictated by whether BS is being added or subtracted from the reference signal. The derivation of this closed loop transfer function will be given in the next video. The fourth definition is the feedback ratio, which is defined as B over R. B can be replaced by CH. And looking at the definition of the closed loop transfer function, we can simply replace C over R. Therefore, the feedback ratio now is equal to GH over 1 plus GH. The fifth definition is the error ratio, which is the error over the input or E over R. The error signal is the output of the summing point, so this can be replaced by R minus B. Using the definition for the feedback ratio, we can arrive at E over R equals to the 1 over 1 plus G H. The characteristic equation can be found by setting the denominator of the closed loop transfer function to zero. The characteristic equation has lots of information about the system stability and the general behavior. In control theory, there are two main methods for analyzing feedback systems. The first method, using the transfer function or the frequency domain, and the second method is the state space method. Sometimes the open loop transfer function is called the loop transfer function. Whilst the feed forward transfer function is called the direct transfer function. In definition 4, the feedback ratio is sometimes called the primary feedback ratio. And the error ratio is sometimes called the actuating signal ratio. Before analyzing feedback systems, in the next video we will introduce the rules for reducing block diagrams. This will allow us to arrive at the canonical feedback control system where we will be able to find the characteristic equation 
and apply our analysis.